Hey guys, today we're going to explore some fascinating reasons as to why you should play as a Dark Iron Dwarf. Namely that 1. They are the first evil or not morally good alliance race. 2. They are the first outcast alliance race or first alliance race that is looked down upon. And 3. They make a lot of law sense as dwarven rogues, casters or warlocks. Just keep this in mind for now as we're going to be going through a few historical events and also some comparisons with their other Dwarven brethren in order to better appreciate their own qualities, culture, and what makes them unique. Now, in order to understand the Dark Irons, or any of the Dwarves in Warcraft, we need to know of the Great Dwarven War, the War of the Three Hammers. Now, the Dwarves were originally all united under one main Dwarf clan, the Ironforge clan. Under this clan were the Bronzebeard clan, the Wildhammer clan and the Dark Iron clan. Although the mountain was shared by all three factions, the three clans were culturally and traditionally diverse and were constantly vying for political power within the kingdom. The Bronzebeards formed the bulk of the military and mercantile classes. They considered themselves the backbone of the kingdom and claimed to share distant blood relatives with the High King Monimus, the Dwarven king at the time and thus considers the other dwarves to be somewhat weaker by nature. In contrast, the Dark Irons inhabited the deepest and darkest corners of the city and had firm control over the kingdom's richest gem and mineral deposits. Their long-standing practice of dabbling in sorcery, along with a penchant for secrecy and political scheming, drew the ire of the majority of Ironforge's inhabitants. Lastly, the Wildhammers would rarely dwell in the city and preferred to inhabit the craggy hills and icy slopes outside Ironforge, gaining fame as adept and resilient mountaineers. Modimus and Vilma, who was not a member of any of the three clans, was the High King and was the only force keeping the city together peacefully. If you didn't know, the town of Envilma in Loch Modan is named after him and the giant statue at the gates of Ironforge is representative of him. Eventually, Modimus and Vilma would pass away due to old age, about 230 years before the opening of the Dark Portal. This would tragically lead to an all-out civil war, embroiling the city in turmoil for many years. There were three main commanders, one for each of the clans, that would have significant impact in this war. Perhaps you might have seen their names before. The Bronzebeard commander was known as Medoran Bronzebeard. The Wildhammer commander was known as Kardros Wildhammer. And the Dark Iron commander was known as Sorcerer Thane Thorisan. The civil war raged for many years. For Kazmodon! But the Bronzebeards eventually gained the upper hand and emerged victorious. As a result, they banished their Dark Iron and Wildhammer brethren from the city, claiming Ironforge as their own. The Dark Irons ventured south and settled in Red Ridge Mountains, while the Wildhammers went north and rebuilt their own mountain city, naming it Grim Batal. Both of these new kingdoms became prosperous in their own right. However, unlike the Wildhammers that had decided to concentrate on their own life peacefully, the Dark Irons were far from content and still stung from their failure to claim Ironforge as their own. Their leader, Sorcerer Thane Torisan, carefully plotted against the other two clans that had previously warred against him, scheming to destroy both the Bronzebeards and the Wildhammers. This then inevitably resulted in the next Dwarven War, aptly named as Thorisan's War. After years of scheming, the Dark Irons launched a two-pronged attack against the Bronzebeards and the Wildhammers. Among the many Dark Iron Warriors and Battle Mages, the clan's armies also included legions of powerful war golems. The attack on Ironforge itself was led by Thorisan, and his wife, Mordgood, would lead the attack on the Wildhammers at Grim Batal. Using his vast siege engines and constructs, Thorisan struck deep into the city, pushing back the Bronzebeard defenders. Massive battles raged through Ironforge's inner halls. Even though the Dark Irons had overwhelming numbers, the Bronze Beards put up a stubborn defense and only managed to draw a line when the Dark Irons had reached the very heart of the city. At the other side of the wall, Mordgood, Thorison's wife, had managed to lay siege to Grim Batal, the Wildhammer stronghold. The Wildhammers were caught off guard, 
and the dark iron mages and sorcerers were using their dark magics to batter and break the wild hammer's will. The dark iron's dark magic brought the shadows of Grimbatol to life, transforming the city into a realm of nightmare and shadow, quickly taking a toll on the wild hammer's strength. In a desperate counter-attack, Kadra's wild hammer led some of his best soldiers in a swift counter-attack, which just barely succeeded in slaying Mordgood herself. With the Dark Iron leader's death and a renewed Wildhammer resistance, the Dark Iron's assaulting force began to slowly crumble. Upon receiving news of this, the Bronzebeards too began to rally their forces, pushing back the morally battered Dark Irons. In the Dark Irons, the Bronzebeards and Wildhammers had found a common enemy and laid aside their differences in the military allegiance. With the Bronzebeards pushing back the Dark Iron armies, and the Wildhammers pushing into Dark Iron territory from the south, the Dark Irons were surrounded in their own lands and soon were on the brink of total defeat. In a desperate attempt to save his people, the Dark Iron leader, Sorcerer Thane Thorisan, wove a great spell to draw upon the fiery powers from deep within the world. However, amid the conjuration, his mind turned to the death of his wife and their recent defeat. He became embroiled in rage and sorrow, causing his spell to breach the elemental plane, tapping into a most fearsome and powerful being, Ragnaros the Fire Lord. Unwittingly, Thorison's summons were answered, and Ragnaros burst forth in a massive volcanic explosion. Mortal insects, you dare trespass into my domain? Your arrogance will be purged in living flame. The entire area was torn asunder, Mountains shattered and the earth split apart. The sorcerer Thane was killed on the spot. The Bronzebeards and the Wildhammers watched in horror as these events unfolded, and fearing for their own safety, called for the retreat of their armies. The war had at last reached its conclusion. Ragnaros, not yet at his full strength, slithered back into the depths of what we now know as Black Rock Mountain. Following the war, the Bronzebeards returned and rebuilt their home, Iron Forge. The Wildhammers, while victorious, could not return to Grim Batal as the Dark Iron Queen had cursed it with a shadowy magic far beyond redemption, transforming it into a place of darkness and terror. The Wildhammers set out to create a new home for themselves, venturing even further north and eventually settling upon the pristine woods of the Hinterlands. Here they built the amazing open-air city of Airy Peak no longer wishing to dwell underground and forming unbreakable bonds with the griffins of the area. In a peaceful and commemorative effort between the two clans, when Kadros and Madoran eventually passed away, two giant statues were built in the Valley of Kings in their honour. The statues kept a constant vigil over the blasted lands to the south, the site of the Dark Iron Clan betrayal and defeat. On the other hand, a much worse fate befell the remaining Dark Irons. From his seat of power in the Molten Core, Ragnaros enslaved the rest of their clan, carving out a new fortress under the mountain named Shadowforge City in Black Rock Depths. Within their new fiery home, the Dark Irons would nurture an even greater hatred for their dwarven brothers, never forgetting or forgiving them for the wrongs they inflicted upon them. The legacy of this war would live on till present times, with many dwarven political decisions being made of the memories of the war. For example, Moria Thorisan, daughter of Magni Bronzebeard and wife of Dagran Thorisan, who is the Dark Iron ruler following the Sorcerer Thane, has recently returned and laid claim to the throne of Iron Forge. This of course is unacceptable to the cities of the Dwarven capital, who would never let another Dark Iron rule over them again. Instead, the current Council of Three Hammers has been formed, a throwback to the old times under Modermus and Vilmar when all three clans lived peacefully together. However, the other two clans would always be suspicious of the Dark Iron's intentions, even as Moria and her Dark Irons have seemingly grown more noble and compassionate. For example, during the Blood in the Snow scenario that we encounter in Mist of Pandaria, a single Zandalari priest was able to turn the Frostmane trolls in Don Moro into a significant threat due to the unwillingness of the dwarves to act for fear that the Dark Irons would betray them if their armies were occupied with the Trolls. Ultimately, the Dark Irons took it upon themselves to deal with the Trolls, but even then they have yet to regain any trust with the other Dwarven clans, believing their supposed kindness to be laced with ulterior motives. 
Even as recently as the war on Draenor and the fight against the Burning Legion, the Dark Irons were treated with distrust by the other dwarves, showing that there was still a long way to go before their relationships could be mended. As you can see from this entire history, the Dark Irons are firstly very morally ambiguous in nature. Sure, every race in the Alliance has had their own so-called evil sect of people. The humans had the Defiers Brotherhood, the Night Elves and the ones that allied with demons, the Norms had all the crazy evil geniuses in Normorigan, the Draenei had obviously the Fell and the Legion, and the Worgen had those that went rogue and succumbed to their beast forms. But these were much more splinter groups in nature, with the Draenei being the largest split, rather than being characteristic of the entire race as a whole. However, for the Dark Irons, it is not unreasonable to characterize their entire clan as being cunning and scheming in nature. This could be for good reasons or bad, but in their history they had mostly expressed themselves as harboring questionable intent towards those that were different from them. So, if you would like to play a race on the Alliance that is pretty far down the moral scale as compared to the others, the Dark Irons would be a perfect pick. In line with this is also of course the fact that they have been mostly shunned and distrusted within the Alliance, and especially by their Dwarven brethren. As compared to the other Alliance races, this is very unique as all the other Alliance races are welcomed with open arms into the Alliance. The Bronzebeard and Wildhammer Dwarves and the Humans of Stormwind have had long military and diplomatic alliances stretching back to the very first wars. The Night Elves have integrated nearly seamlessly into the fold, sharing a similar hatred of the Orcs. The Draenei, in their belief and staunch pursuit of the Light, have been accepted with open arms, and the Worgen have been welcomed back as long-lost brothers, as befits Gilneas being a long-time ally of Lordaeron. In stark contrast, the Dark Irons have been long-time enemies of Ironforge and the Alliance as a whole. Their sudden forced assimilation into their societies due to Moria's heritage would only serve to increase tensions among the ruling factions, which it has proven to do so. They are the true outcasts within the Alliance, with the more noble ones striving against an uphill battle to redeem themselves, and with the more heinous ones lurking within the city, swearing fealty only to Moria and looking out only for themselves and their kin. The level of harmony and cooperation between the existing Alliance races is the total opposite of that of the Horde, which continually breaks and fractures itself into opposing camps. While it is common to feel alone and distant from the other races of the Horde, especially if you are, say, the Forsaken, this dynamic does not really exist within the Alliance, until, that is, with the Dark Irons. So they will be a great choice of race to play for someone who may want to feel more independent from his allegiance, or for someone that feels like placing the importance of their race over that of the Alliance. Lastly, I just felt that it was always weird to be a Dwarven Rogue or Spellcaster within the current Ironforged Dwarven society. It was just odd if I were a big burly stocky Dwarf of honourable heritage to be dwelling in fell magics or being a sneaky pickpocket. Well, no longer, as the very culture of the Dark Iron spells sorcery and deceit. Shadowy, arcane and fell magics course through their blood, as exemplified in how the old Queen Modgood cursed the entire Grin Batal with her foul magics. It would now make perfect sense to be a Dark Iron Rogue, Warlock or Mage, and lore-wise this class fantasy couldn't be closer to the truth. Aesthetically, they also look the part, with their burning eyes and charred skin. As an additional point of trivia, there were some Dark Irons that broke off from those consumed under Ragnaros' influence. The most well-known of these would be the Thorium Brotherhood, who we encounter as a major quest hub in the Searing Gorge. If you had been wondering, hey, why are these Dark Irons friendly towards us? Well, that's because they rebelled against Ragnaros and managed to escape the fiery depths of Black Rock Mountain. Famously known as the best smiths and craftsmen of the world, they now also possess the knowledge to make the arms and armaments of the Fire Lord himself. They stay mostly neutral to the conflicts around them, besides being sworn enemies of their Dark Iron Brethren that serve Ragnaros. 
So if you were considering choosing a Dark Iron Dwarf as a race, you don't necessarily need to have a nefarious background of having served a Fire Lord or being corrupted in Black Rock Depths. You could be one of those that managed to escape from his clutches, choosing a nobler path of neutrality rather than wishing doom upon all of the world. Speaking of nobler intentions, as a last point of trivia, there exists a pretty famous dwarf known as Frankron Forright. Forright was a celebrated architect from the Dark Iron Clan, being instrumental in constructing the colossal fortress of Black Rock Spire within the mountain. He was also the architect of the famous Stone Rod Dam in Loch Modan. In addition, he was also the smith of the legendary hammers Iron Foe and Iron Fell. When spoken to, he seems to very much regret his actions under Ragnaros's command, stating that the Dark Irons were once an honourable race, driven to madness, to evil. In an act of redemption, he requests for us to kill the new Dark Iron Chief Architect, Phineas Darkvire, and return Ironfell to him. Thus, the Dark Iron Dwarfs are very capable of turning over a new leaf, as seen in Forright, the Thorium Brotherhood, and now Queen Moria. So if you were considering choosing a Dark Iron Dwarf Paladin, it would fit pretty well into their lore, as they have been known to, albeit rarely, do noble deeds from time to time. And that's a wrap! While I know that this video did get a little lengthy, I wanted to make sure I gave you guys a nice complete picture in order to fully understand the position of the Dark Irons. As a quick recap, you may want to choose a Dark Iron other than for gameplay reasons for these reasons. They are 1. They are the first evil or not morally good alliance race. 2. They are the first outcast alliance race or the first alliance race that is looked down upon by the others. And number 3. The Dark Irons make a lot of lore sense as dwarven rogues, casters or warlocks. If you made it to this part of the video, thanks for watching the whole way through. Hope you have a great week ahead and I'll see you in Azeroth.